Welcome to an introduction to the use of Sidekick in School AI. After you've logged into School AI, you'll land on the launch pad or the homepage of School AI. Sidekick is listed under Launch a Student Activity. It has a blue popular button on it because it's one of the most popular resources to use in School AI. What it does is it provides you the ability to make a chatbot for your students using just simple English, um, and it includes all of the fences or safety features around that chatbot without you having to utilize ChatGPT in order to create a chatbot. And it also allows you to disseminate that chatbot to all of your students so that they will have a unique instance of it. And it also allows you to track how they interact with that um, sidekick. Sidekicks can be used for any number of um, reasons. You can use it to create a, um, a tutor on any subject that is narrowed down with a focus on the grade level of your students. It can be used to create virtual historic figures or to discuss any topic at all that you wish to have it discussed with your students. So I'm going to go through real quickly how to create a sidekick, what it looks like on the student's end, and how you can track the usage of that sidekick. So to start up a sidekick, you're simply going to click on it. And it's going to give you a simple interface here. And um, it just gives basic information about sidekick. Students can take advantage of AI's capabilities to explore any number of topics, answer questions, quiz themselves, and so forth. Um, you have full access to the chat sessions, allowing you to monitor student activity. And then right off the bat, it asks you, what do you want Sidekick to do with your students? So in this case, what I'm going to do is say, um, I'm going to pretend that my students are fifth graders and we had a shared class experience where we read the book Hatchet. And so what I'm going to do is have Sidekick create um, itself as a character from the book in order to interact with those students if they wish to um, interact with that character because they enjoyed the book, they had some questions, or they just think it would be a fun experience to virtually interact with that character. So what I'm going to do is choose the character Brian from Hatchet. So I'm going to say to um, Sidekick, I want you to be the character Brian from the book Hatchet. Please interact with my students as that character and tell them about your experiences based based on the book and ask them how they would interact if they had the same experiences themselves. Now I could stop here. I could go to preview and see what the sidekick would look like for my students. I can launch it right now, or I can go into more options. And under more options, it tells you to please describe your audience or the participants. So what I'm gonna go in here is say, my students are fifth grade students. How would you like Sidekick to interact? Interact in a conversational tone and draw them out with questions related to the story. What rules do you want to set for this session? Um, basically, it says share concrete rules around what Sidekick will and won't do with your students. And a note, persistent students may find ways around these guardrails and Sidekick will flag those instances to you when you check up on how the students are interacting with your Sidekick. So I'm just going to put in here, please ensure you steer conversations back to the topic at hand. And let me know if any students are continually trying to veer off on tangents. And that's it. From here, I can go ahead and launch this. I'll take a moment for the launch. And what it's going to do is create a chatbot based upon these parameters and the parameters that School AI builds in for all of its chatbots. 
And then it's going to give you a method to invite your students in. Now, you can see on the right-hand side that you can add this to any Google Classroom as an assignment, and the link will appear in there as part of it. Or you can directly give it to them by clicking on using the QR code. This gives you a QR code. Students could use it with mobile devices. You could feel free to download that QR code and install it somewhere or print it. Put it in a bookmark in a book if you wanted to, or simply use the URL right here. You can use this also to paste into a Google Classroom assignment if you'd like. I'm going to go ahead and copy this so you can see what happens when a student clicks on that link. So I'm going to open up a new tab, and I'm going to paste in that URL. And so every time any of your students click, they're going to get a unique instance of this sidekick. They won't see any other conversations that are going on um, with any other student and their instance of the sidekick. Students will only be seeing their instance of the sidekick. So I'm going to go in here as a student named David, and I'm going to click Join. Every single student, again, puts in their name. They get a unique instance of the sidekick. And right off the bat, the sidekick is going to introduce itself. Hi there, I'm Brian from Hatchet. I ended up in the wilderness after a plane crash and had to survive with just a hatchet. It was a wild adventure. Imagine you're stranded in the wild like me. What do you think you'd do first? So I'm going to say I would probably search the um, area and call for help a lot. I'm going to hit enter. And the sidekick is going to stay in character and respond to that great thinking, exploring the area smart, calling for help is a good start. I had to find food and shelter pretty quickly. What would you look for to eat? Or where would you try to find a shelter? I'm not sure if it rained a lot. I would probably look for a cave. Not sure what I could eat. Maybe some berries. Okay, and again, it's going to continue to respond, but you'll notice that after each of these responses, it asks a question, draws the student in further. How do you think you could find out which berries are safe? I would look to see what the animals around me are eating, which bushes have a lot of berries missing look for ones I've eaten before and maybe just try one or two for taste. And so it leverages all the power of ChatGPT, all the knowledge that's out there, but narrow down and focus just in this particular topic and provides a tone similar to a 13 year old um, who's living in the wild and the uh, personality of the character from the book itself. And again, it continues to ask questions, continues to draw. So as a teacher, how can I see these interactions? Well, I'm going to go back to the original link where I shared, and you'll see that under the sidekick that's listed here, there is one participant. I'd like to see what the animals, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so it gives you a snippet of the conversation thus far. It gives you a little emoji about this um, interaction, and it says thoughtful survival strategies and keen observational skills are being provided by David in this interaction. So if I want to see the whole conversation, I simply click there and it opens up on the right hand side and I can take a look and follow along um, the questions and the answers that that student has provided. So if you multiply this by say 24 students in your classroom, you're getting 24 inputs instead of asking these questions in class and only getting answers from the students who typically raise their hands um, or you know, calling on those students who don't tend to interact. You're getting 24 interactions. You can see um, how they fell about the story. Um, they understood the story um, and so forth. And this is just one of any number of sidekicks you can create. If I go back to Launchpad and scroll down, it will show under recent sessions on the bottom of the Launchpad that there is a sidekick here and I can launch back into it. There's a three dot menu over here and I can end this conversation. Next year, I can duplicate this um, chat bot and use it with my new students if I'd like, or just simply delete it. 
All right, so other ways that you can use Sidekick, I'm gonna click in here one more time and I'm going to say, you are a, um, let's see, you are a parts of speech um, tutor for my um, third grade students. I want you to quiz them using a variety of words, asking them which part of speech it is and helping them understand if they get it wrong, provide plenty of encouragement if they get it right. Okay, more options. These will be third grade students learning about parts of speech. How would you like Psychic to interact? Be friendly and positive with them. What rules do you want to set for this? Make sure they stay on topic. All right, launch. It's going to launch that, create a sidekick or a chatbot. I could add it to Google Classroom, or I can go here, grab that URL, and the same thing here. I'm going to open a new tab, paste in that URL. And this time, I'm going to say this person is Sarah, and I'm going to click Join. I said these were third grade students, so it starts out very friendly, simple English. Hey there, ready to have some fun with parts of speech? Let's start with a little quiz. What part of speech do you think the word jump is? And I'm going to go ahead and say, I think it's a verb, right? Oops, misspelled it. So it says close. It's actually a verb. I spelled very because it's an action word. Great try. Want to try another one? How about the word happy? I think that might be an adjective. It says, nope, happy is a verb because it describes an action. Let's try another. What part of this of speech is the word happy? Is it a verb? So when it came to parts of speech, it's saying, no, it's an adjective because it describes a feeling. You're doing great. Let's try another one. Part of speech is quickly. That's an adverb. Awesome. Quickly is indeed an adverb because it tells us how something is done. You're on a roll. Try one more. What part of speech is a cat? Oh, that's definitely a noun. Perfect. Cat's a noun because it names a thing. You're doing amazing. Do you want to try more or have questions about parts of speech? Okay, so scrolling up in here, it says close, happy is an adjective. You're doing great. Let's try another one. What part of speech is quickly? I can go, tell me more about adjectives. I'm still not sure about what they are or what they do. And then it provides a little bit of an example of what adjectives are. So again, I can go back here, close this out, and then I can take a look at all of the interactions done by my students. And I can get feedback from all 24 students on their understanding of parts of speech instead of, again, who's raising their hand and who's um, answering questions for me typically in class. Okay, 
So any sidekicks that you create will be down here and you can access to those. Also under spaces, there is a sessions and you can see the sidekicks here. Now you notice they're both named sidekick, which might not be a very friendly thing for you. So this one I said, um, parts of speech. So I can go up here and I can say parts of speech. Close that out. Go back to Launchpad, and now it says parts of speech. And on this one here, I can click, and I can name this one Brian from Hatchet Discussion. Go back to Launchpad, give it a moment, and you'll see that it says Brian from Hatchet. So you can name these in order to help you out with which one's which as time goes on. You can put week one dash parts of speech, week two dash parts of speech, and make it a little bit more challenging if you want to. But you can have as many of these as you want, and they are eminently shareable. The nice thing about this is that the URL can be shared over and over again. So copy student link, I can copy it again and share it again later on. Whereas with ChatGPT, yes, you could put in prompts, but you're gonna need how to prompt it. And then you're probably gonna to have to recreate it again all over to have your students use it. And you certainly don't wanna create a prompted ChatGPT session for 24 students in your class. Here, I just go over, find it, three dot menu, copy the student link, share it with them. They don't have to have a school AI account to get in here, no ChatGPT account to get in here, and I've built fences for them so they can use this the way I want them to use it. So there are probably literally hundreds of different ways you can use Sidekick to interact with your students. So I'm gonna end it here. Um, if you have any other questions about this, you can certainly contact me and ask me, and I can probably help you figure out um, how to build a sidekick that does specifically what you're looking for. Thanks.